Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said the decision authorizing the use of the U.S.-supplied longer-range missiles by Ukraine to strike inside Russia will add fuel to the fire in the conflict. The weapons are likely to be used in response to North Korea's decision to send thousands of troops to support Russia in the Kursk region where Ukraine mounted a military incursion over the summer. It is obvious that the outgoing administration in Washington intends to take steps and they have been talking about this, to continue adding fuel to the fire and provoking further escalation of tensions around this conflict, Peskov said. It is the second time the U.S. has permitted the use of Western weapons inside Russian territory within limits after permitting the use of HIMARS systems, a shorter-range weapon, to stem Russia's advance in Ukraine's Kharkiv region in May. Peskov also rejected the idea of a ceasefire along the line of combat in Ukraine, saying it's unacceptable for Russia. Президент Путин уже объяснил и объяснил очень просто. Дело в том, что эти удары наносят не Украина, эти удары наносят те страны, которые дают разрешение. Потому что целенаведение, другое обслуживание выполняют не украинские военные. Это делают военные специалисты из этих самых западных стран. А это кардинальным образом как раз меняет модальность их вовлеченности в конфликт. В этом опасность провокационность этой ситуации. Конечно, как это вариант заморозки по, по, по линии боевого столкновения, конечно, априори неприемлем для, для российской стороны. И в данном случае июньские сформулированные условия президента Путина, они полностью сохраняют свою актуальность. Это то, что нужно сделать для того, чтобы боевые действия были остановлены. Russians are intensifying combat operations in an attempt to break through the front lines as the time remaining until the inauguration of the US president-elect Donald Trump is limited, says Ukrainian military expert Mikhailo Samus, director of the new Geopolitics Research Network, according to Espresso TV. The inauguration of the new US president is scheduled for the 20th of January 2025. Donald Trump has repeatedly stated that he will ensure the war between Russia and Ukraine is quickly brought to an end. Samus has explained that the current situation at the front has not changed significantly over the past two months. Russian forces remain focused on the Pokrovsk and Kurokov directions in Donetsk Oblast. The Russians' time is limited. I mean the window of opportunity they theoretically have before Trump's inauguration. Samus said. The expert noted that signals from the US are not as negative for Ukraine as initially feared. The candidates being considered by Trump for his administration are, among other things, anti-Russian and advocate a peace through strength approach, forcing Putin to end the war through power. We'll see the details soon, Samus claimed. He emphasized that this development is not what Russian ruler Vladimir Putin had hoped for when he tried to occupy Donbass over the past year. Putin essentially expected to achieve decisive success in Donbass, occupying nearly the entire region. From this strong position, he planned to negotiate with the new US president. Currently, the situation is not looking so favorable for Putin. He is sending his troops into a meat grinder, incurring massive losses. The Russians are throwing everything they have, all resources, into a desperate attempt to break through the front in the shortest time possible, Samos highlighted. He added that the Kurokov direction is particularly challenging for Ukraine's defense forces right now. According to the expert, Putin aims to reach the administrative borders of Donetsk Oblast to demonstrate to the world and the new U.S. administration that supporting Ukraine is pointless and that Russia is winning. He concluded that this strategy of Russia has remained unchanged for a long time.
Ten servicemen escaped from a military unit in the village of Kochenyovo in the Novosibirsk region of Russia. This was reported by head of the Kochenyevsky district, Yevgeny Antipov. Information is being disseminated about an incident on the territory of the military unit of Kochenyovo. I ask you to remain calm and not to trust unreliable information. According to the Kochenyevsky District Department of Internal Affairs, the 10 people from the category of those who had previously voluntarily left the unit without permission. Within 30 minutes, they left the territory of the village by taxi. No crimes were committed on the territory of the district. Four people were detained outside the Kochenyevsky district, he wrote. As reported by the NGS publication, citing a source about 30 people from all over the central military district who had previously voluntarily left their units for reasons unrelated to service, were seconded to the military unit in Kochenyovo. In a chat room of local residents of the village, a local police officer reported that the escapees were unarmed. All of the escapees are the so-called five hundredths, as deserters are called in military slang. According to preliminary data, the servicemen were gathered in Kochenyovo to be sent to the Special Operations Zone. The publication writes, According to Sibir.Reli, one of those who left the military unit was 29-year-old Anatoly Petrovishev, a native of the village of Odinskoy in the Novosobirsk region. An acquaintance of Petrovishev confirmed that he had previously been in the combat zone in Ukraine. The interlocutor provided photographs of the man from a field camp allegedly near the front. According to the description among the SKPs, was also a resident of the Karatuski district of the Krasnoyarsk territory, Anatoly Serkin. In 2020, he received 2.5 years in a special regime colony for stealing a laptop. The man had previously been convicted several times for similar crimes. Thousands of Russian soldiers are deserting the army, according to Kyiv. Earlier, Ukraine's military intelligence agency said that troops under Russia's southern military district deployed to fight in the war are increasingly deserting their posts. Desertion has been an issue for Russia's military throughout Putin's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Desertion from the Russian army carries a 10-year prison sentence. In February, a Russian anti-war project named Get Lost which was created to help Russian men evade or escape conscription in Ukraine, said cases of desertion from the Russian military increased tenfold this year.